Hi, this is Dennis with Cybercraft. Today we're doing a practice performance-based question from PB, uh, PBQ for the CompTIA Security Plus. So we have this PBQ. You can find this on CompTIA's website. And we're gonna go through it and we're gonna see if we can do this on uh, our own, just like uh, we've done in the past. So let's go ahead and jump into this one. It's this supposed to be an example of a simulation exam or a PBQ you'd get on the real test. So let's take a, take a look here. So it asks us to read the question carefully, follow the instructions, click the submit button when you have finished, you'll get a numeric score. Okay, so here's the question. And then we have, okay, we have a diagram here. After experiencing attacks on its servers, company A hired a cybersecurity analyst to configure a DMZ, a demilitarized zone, and increase security measures. Shortly after the network was reconfigured, an assistant on the second floor reported that one of the executives could not access the internet, comptia.org. However, they said, uh, he said they can send initial internal email, use the internet, or use the intranet, and print on the local area network printer. So the intranet would be the company's internet, basically. The company's uh, internal web. All right, so instructions. Check the IP addresses and connectivity of each of the workstations to determine which is the affected machine. Use that information to ensure that the access control list is properly configured to allow all workstations to access the internet. The router's access control list implements an implicit deny. Okay, so there's probably a rule missing on the firewall to allow for access on one of the, the systems. Only make changes to correct the connectivity issue. And anytime you'd like to bring the initial state of the simulation, click the reset all button. Okay. All right, so seems like a pretty good question. Let's close that out. Okay. So. We have the internet coming in, telco cage, telco router. Uh, then we have this router that goes into the executive offices. And this is our DMZ with our file server, email server, web server, switch, and DNS. Okay, so I'd say perhaps something here. So what we want us to do is probably determine the IP address of these two workstations. One of these is probably that CEO or executive, and then determine what the rule is missing here. Okay, so let's see. All right, so I can do IP config. Great. So IP config, IP address 68, and it's on the 224 subnet. Okay, so 68 is the IP address. Got it. And then what's this one? 82. Okay, let's try pinging 68. 192.168.0.68. Okay, so I'm getting a reply. Okay, so these two computers can talk to one another. So that means we don't have a problem here. It means we probably have a problem here. Okay, so F1, or okay, so Ethernet 3 is going to the switch. So we need to pay attention to Ethernet 3. Ethernet 3 address 192.168.065, network mask 224, and a slash 27 CIDR. Okay. Let's check these two again. Oh, it doesn't save it. Okay, I gotta do this again. That's fine. All right, 65 default gateway. So I'm checking 65 default gateway. Okay. All right, so let's make sure. Okay, now let's take a look at the ACLs here. We have dot six four dot eight zero. I'm being. Per this is a great time to use your notepad if you're on the right, right, um, on the real test because you you'd want to write down these instead of keeping a look at them. IP eight two eight two, so eight two six eight. I gotta keep this in my brain. Eight two and six eight. All right. Eight two six eight, and then we have six four. Jeez. Uh, All right. Sorry. IP config, I'm just going to check this again. 
six five is the default gateway. Okay, so we have the option to delete one of these rules. So we need to figure out which rule is causing the issue here. There's our implicit deny. So internet would be 80 and 443. So source any, accept, okay. Can we add anything? No, we cannot. Any, any deny from eight zero. I think this is causing our issue here, right here. We have basically an implicit deny on this IP range. So let's do that. We've removed that rule. I think we should verify the issue now that's resolved. That's probably going to have to be a step here. So what they say? CompTIA.org. Okay, so let's see if that workstation now, which is, this is the one that was messed up, is going to do CompTIA. Well, I guess both of them really. Um, all right, so ping. And it's HTTPS. CompTIA.org. All right, let's just try comptia.org. Ping comptia.org. Okay, all right, so that works. Okay, so that's built into the scenario because this isn't a real network. This is a, a simulated network. So, I mean, if that works, then, you know, let's do here too. Ping comptia.org. Okay, we got that. And we got this. Let's try this. Ping comptia.org okay so we have that's working too so I think that's fine I can't th see anything else that would be a problem here let's see f0 or ethernet 0 in this range and then we go to the access control list we don't see anything else with this IP range so I think we're good so we did this double checking this I think we're okay. We pinged comptia.org just to make sure. Okay, good. And let's do that on the other workstation. I think we're set here. Because you always want to verify that the issue's working. So that makes sense. We're pinging that. That works. So these commute these things can now talk to the comptia.org. I don't have anything else to click on. I think we're finished. I think we did it. So let's try submit here. Okay, good. All right, that was, that was a pretty decent question. That's actually a really good approximation of what you'll get on the exam. It's important to know your command line tools like that. Uh, let me refresh that. And this is a pretty basic one. Sometimes they're a lot more complex on the test, but remember it's a simulated environment. So we did have trouble. We uh, remember you're pinging if it doesn't work like HTTPS CompTIA.org, just ping CompTIA.org. It's a simulated environment. It's not a full instance, so you can't do everything that you would normally be able to do with a command line prompt or nmap or whatever. But you should be able to do most of it. Uh, we we had to evaluate the act. We didn't have the ability to add anything. We just had the ability of deleting that one rule. But overall, I think this is a decent question. It's a good idea of what you'll get on the test. And remember, you get between two and 10 performance-based questions. Usually it's about five. Usually about five performance-based questions. But I hope this was helpful for you. If you enjoyed the video, uh, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you guys and hope you have a wonderful day today.